Welcome to the Christy Taylor Show. This is a special edition. I am so excited about this. You know, I have been on a personal journey post radio of moving into the entrepreneurial space, and I have had some great opportunities to meet a, a, a amazing people on Clubhouse, through Instagram, through Facebook, learning how to use these online platforms to really network and grow my business, Christy Taylor Consulting, as well as also grow my media company, Radio Girl Media. So there has been a lot going on over here with Christy Taylor. I know you all have known me for a good 20 years in the radio space, and some know me in film. But I tell you, entrepreneurship has been challenging for me. But I'm so grateful that I'm now meeting amazing people across the country and around the world who are helping to guide me and instruct me and, and network. And one particular person that I met via Clubhouse, and I want to make sure that you all get a chance to know her as well. And this is Melissa Jakubavik. She's going to make sure I say that correctly. Also known in the industry as the lead generation genie is an online marketing strategist to coaches and healers. That part really resonated with me. The founder of Melise Marketing, author of Hashtag Expert, and host of the Marketing Tips with Melise podcast. She helps coaches and healers add $10,000 to their months and scale their business in 90 days or less. She loves helping people and helping them end the feast famine cycle and fill their one-to-one -one calendar and group program so they can make an impact in the lives of others and abundance and freedom in there. So check this out. She's also a single mom with two amazing boys. And I want you all to help me welcome to the Christy Taylor Show, a very special lady who has definitely carved out some time for me. And I'm really appreciative of it. Melise, thank you for coming to the special edition of the Christy Taylor Show. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me, Christy. It's a pleasure. Such an honor. You know, I am being all cards on the table. I'm new to this entrepreneurial venture, so this is going to be less of an interview and more of a help me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it. Okay. Now, first and foremost, I read your bio, but how did you get to this phase? So I am a very flowy person. I'm a dancer. I go with the flow. I, I even went live today and the topic was how to go with the flow. And that's really how my whole life has been. And so with entrepreneurship, it started out as, you know, I actually became an entrepreneur in the third grade when I was making friendship bracelets on the playground and selling them to my friends. But honestly, I've been an entrepreneur my whole entire life. Um, I've owned a dance company, a yoga studio, an art studio. Uh, eventually, I landed on health and life coaching. And so I did that completely online. I built that up got a following, really scaled that business. And then my coaching friends and my healer friends, they were asking me how did you do that? Can you help us? So I started dabbling in the marketing side and helping them in it. And eventually it just morphed. And I've been owning uh, my marketing agency, Melissa Marketing, for a little over six years. And I wanted to stay in that surrounding of those people, my tribe, the coaches, the healers, the helpers of the world, and also a little bit woo-woo space, which is where I really belong. So my marketing agency is to help those types of people. <laughs> You know, and I guess that's why you resonated with me very much when we were on Clubhouse. And this is actually a couple of months ago. Um, both of our schedules have been crazy busy. Um, so, of course, it's taken us to get to May to get here. But what really resonated was the creative and the healer aspect. Now, for those who know me for radio, I've also dabbled in screenwriting. You know, I have a, a, a life coaching uh, message that I used to share that I want to resurrect now. So as I was listening, and I'm trying to find people to help me with the business, the back end, the automation, the, the stuff that's like freaking me out to find someone who was focusing on people like me. I was like, oh, OK, OK, I can do this. I can do this with the focus without losing my spiritual want to help the world, <laughs> empath, introvert, extrovert. Absolutely. Yeah. So I really appreciate you, you know, sharing with us creatives <laughs> what you learned in the trenches. Now, I see Pray, Wait, Trust. Also, it's on its way. Okay, these are two 
apparently very powerful things you live by. How do they integrate into the business aspect of what you do? That's amazing. That's a great question. Um, I'm a very spiritual person. And the way I approach business is through the lens of spirituality, as opposed to the other way around, where I approach spirituality or business separately. They are totally connected in, in my eyes. And this is the way I teach my clients and my students as well. I believe that mindset is the number one thing, step one, before anything else can happen in entrepreneurship, before you can manifest anything, before you can get clients in the door, before you can make consistent monthly income, all of it comes from up here in your mind. It's really important that you get your mindset straight and also to affirm that things are coming. I believe that Every woman deserves freedom and abundance, and it starts from within. So my entire approach to business is to have the mindset to understand the universal laws, the law of attraction, and also practical business building strategies. So what I do is I combine the feminine and the masculine energies together to create success for my clients. So feminine energy is all the woo-woo, it's all the affirmations, it's meditations, it's mindset, personal development work, um, it's the art of allowing, allowing clients to come to you and leads to, you know, blossom into conversations. All of that is, is your feminine energy, that intuition, all of that. And a lot of coaches and healers they've nailed it. They know their feminine energy inside and out, but they still struggle to make consistent income and have a flowing stream of clients. And it's because they've forgotten to look over here at the masculine side. And the masculine side is your business building structure. It's building the foundational marketing systems. It's taking action. It's going out, putting yourself out there, being visible. And if you have one over the other, you are not in balance. So I believe that you should be in balance. And I do have clients that come to me who are very much in the masculine side, and I need to help them open up their feminine side. But all of us have the ability to reach both of these things at their peak. And when you do, you have a nice balance where the business just flows very naturally. So that's my theory. I'm so glad that you spoke to that because I, I checked out your YouTube channel and one of the, the more recent episodes that resonated with me deeply was about selling as an introvert. Now, Melise, this is going to sound weird to those who know me for the last 20 years here in the Memphis market. Here I am, a radio personality who has you know 100,000 watts at my disposal, sharing information, playing music, interviewing people. But as soon as I've stepped into this entrepreneurial space, I'm telling my close friends, like, I'm scared. I'm like, what are you afraid of? They're like, I'm like, and I'm like, totally like trying to be honest, like I'm, I'm freaking out because number one, I'm not hiding in a studio behind a mic. You know, I'm having to be visual. I'm having to use these platforms and go live and Instagram and Facebook. And I just feel like I'm overexposed. I'm, I, and, and I tell people, I say, I'm feeling so KK. They're like, what? I said, Kim Kardashian. I just feel like I'm overexposed. And they're like, you're not even doing anything. (laughs) And when I was listening to your episode, I was like, oh, and that's the other thing about, I've, I've done a lot of the behind the scenes. I do the graphics. I do the Canva. I set things up. I love the research. I love the hermit part of me coming up with the ideas and then to execute and sell it to the world. It's like, I have so much on my laptop that possibly could be generating me millions of dollars but i've been on a but i've been so this is a this is a honest moment afraid to put myself out there but your episode started me i'm like oh the introvert in me it doesn't want to go out and play the feminine part of me that just wants things to come to me and i was like that's the first time anyone has made that make sense to me it's like i I am a person like hey the life of the party but if i'm not the host of the party i am the hermit in the back of the room you sound just like me i'm an infj on my myers-briggs which is the most extroverted introvert and so i could go into a room with ten thousand people and get on the stage without any practice and give a lovely speech that people will love That's perfect. But if I'm not on the stage, (laughs) if I'm not the director of the whole operation and I'm a participant, you will find me in the corner waiting for people to come to me to talk to me. (laughs) 
that so you're my you're my soulmate in this regard you are my that is, and so i have never had anyone explain to me how a introvert a extroverted introvert actually gets into marketing and sales that it's the got, thing it's is got, that if you own a business and it's not a hobby and it's not just something that you do because you're trying it out but you truly own a business you have to make money that yeah. is what a business okay. does yeah. And a business that makes money is going to thrive and you'll be able to take things off your plate and delegate because you'll have income that you can put back into the into the business. Mm -hmm. However, if you're not trying to make money in your business, no one else is going to do that for you. So the most important thing you need to focus on are your sales and your marketing. And the marketing that you do today is the sales that you have tomorrow or in 90 days or whatever it is. So your focus really needs to go into sales and marketing in order for your business to grow and scale and thrive. So using I am an introvert as a crutch, which a lot of people do, keeps us small, it keeps us hidden, and then nobody can come into our world because they don't even know about us, and then we're not able to help people, which is the main reason why we started our business. So. Wow, you're, you're, you're hitting me in the gut. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some tips and techniques that like you share on Clubhouse that oftentimes guide people, not just extroverts and introverts, but just you know, any person who's in business along the spectrum. Well, Clubhouse is like any other social media platform in that if you want it to be profitable for you, you need to spend time there. You need to devote a lot of your time there and you need to show up consistently. Also, you need to have your bio that makes sense and really calls out directly who you're speaking to and what you do. And Maybe you're talking in a club or in the hallway. You've got to play around with it and see where your people are. But it's just like any other platform. So if you're just starting out as an entrepreneur, I'd say pick one platform and go all out, put all your eggs in that basket. These platforms have thousands, if not billions of people in them. And you might only need four clients a month. You can surely find four clients out of billions of people. So just pick whichever platform feels best for you and also where is your target market hanging out? Because that's the platform you want to be on. Now, if you are on Clubhouse, my suggestions are to find rooms that use the keywords or even the emojis that are, that are searchable for things that you want to speak on or your clients or potential clients want to hear about. And then also pair yourselves with other powerhouse people who you guys can go into a room together and moderate together because you're stronger in numbers. They can each, you can... Both of you can bring a big audience and now you're in front of a whole new audience. So you want to stay visible all the time. Also, scheduling your rooms out in advance is helpful to let people know about them. And then if you do have other platforms, you can share about those rooms on Instagram and Facebook and invite people to, to listen in. Um, one thing that's different about Clubhouse is that it's all audio. So what's interesting as an introvert um, a lot of my introvert friends have favored Clubhouse because they don't have to show their face and they feel like this is amazing as an introvert. I can just talk and wear pajamas and it's no big deal and I feel less pressure. But what's interesting is I'm an introvert and I much prefer going live um, because going live is me in front of my laptop. I can read certain comments if I want to and not the ones I don't want to. And then I can close down when I'm done and I feel like my energy is depleted. Where on Clubhouse, I have to talk and I have to respond to people like in the moment and be really active. So I've heard from lots of different introverts who favor one platform over the other. There is no right or wrong, but just put yourself out there and also. Don't take it as something you need to do, but you're doing it for them. It's about them, what they need, and you provide that solution. So when you think of it that way, it's not as as pressure, high pressure to be like, oh, they care about me because they don't care about you. They care about them, and then you're just coming in for the solution. <laughs> Melissa, you said that in that episode. You actually said, you know, as a um, if you're a true introvert, the the gift of listening is your gift to sales. Right Absolutely. Again. Absolutely. So extroverts, they come out, they're the party starters. They go up to people. Hey, how are you? What's up? What do you do? Da -da -da, chit, 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 chat. Introverts are great listeners and great salespeople are great listeners. So you actually have the advantage as an introvert 
to be really good in, in sales and be really strong in your business because you just need to have like a script of four or five questions that you ask on a sales call and they're the same every single time. And then you shut up and you listen and you're a good listener as an introvert. People, <laughs> especially as an empath, if you're yes. an empath, people just randomly come up to me all the time and tell me their whole life story, like Hi, random yes. things. So use it to your benefit oh, in your yes. sales. Okay. You just ask an open-ended question and then you sit back and you listen. And, listen and then you could also ask follow-up questions because you're such a good listener. You know what to pull out, you know, and as an empath, you kind of have this intuition about what, what questions to ask that will pull out emotion. So, and also you, I said this in the episode, but you don't need to worry about, are they going to close? Are we going to make a sale? If you follow the money, you're going to be chasing money all the time. But if you follow the service, the money will just come in anyway. And so what you should focus on in your sales call is not, um, is this person, like, what is this person thinking? Do they want to join my program? It's more about, is this a good fit for you I, and me to work together? I loved when you said that, that I loved it because I was having an issue thinking if, because like you said, there's an energetic thing that I'm going off of. I'm like, oh, I don't want to work with them. And I felt bad because it's like, but I need money, but I don't want to work with them, but I need money. I don't want to work with them. So going to the concept, is this a good fit? Like, am I what they need? And are they what I need? That really was a paradigm shift. I mean, so, wow. A good well, fit. a sales call or discovery call or whatever it is, is really just a two-way interview. So they're interviewing you to see if you're a good fit, if you're a good coach, if they like your style, but you get to do that too. And that's why I run my own business because I want to run it my way. I want to show up for my clients and be so excited to talk to them. Not like, uh, energy sucking. This is terrible. You know, so, <laughs> or I, I've fired clients before who really just weren't a good fit. And I've learned over time, what I teach my clients is to come up with a non-negotiable list of who is your ideal client and what you want. So if you are a, a fertility coach, for example, one of your non-negotiables is someone who's struggling with fertility. If you're a parenting coach, one of your non-negotiables is someone who's a parent. And so some of them are going to be very obvious. Like if I only help women, obviously one of the non-negotiables is it has to be a woman. But some of them are going to be less obvious. Maybe you want someone who's really coachable, someone who respects your expertise. And these are things that you will figure out in conversation. So it is an interview for you as well. And then if it's not a good fit, you are not obligated under any circumstance to work with people you don't want to. It's your own business. So when I get close to a, a call with someone, I know it's not a good fit, but usually I know that before the call, I will just redirect them into a different position. I'll say either here's a colleague of mine who can help you better, or here's some books I think you can read or hop into my free group. So you don't have to work with anyone you don't want to. I like that. That's such a soft way to say, uh, no, it's yeah, not no. you. <laughs> Speaking of your Facebook group, um, actually, do you, let's see if we have that pulled up. Um, wow. There it is. Yes. Uh, this I is my group. Join. I have to join. I have to yes, join. Yes, come on in. It's called Magnetic Marketing Mastermind. Mm -hmm. um, and it's for women entrepreneurs, healers, coaches. The entrepreneur part here, the women entrepreneurs, is all encompassing of online service based personal branded businesses who can support coaches and healers in their journey. So it could be funnel builders, virtual assistants, copywriters, anybody that's going to help support you. Um, and it's it says here, your free space to learn online marketing strategies, connect authentically and grow your business with intention. So I go live in there all the time. I have access to all my free resources in there. A lot of great resources you can go in. I have um, links in the guides right here in the guides to um, sales training that I've done before or just training on how to get more clients in your business. So this is a really active, fun exciting community to be a part of. And we are hosting a really cool giveaway um, this month in May, and it's going to have over $2,000 worth of prizes. So it's really exciting. Wow. So what's your premium program? Because this is a lot, you know, because I've, like I said, I've been in serious research, pivot mode, trying to understand how to um, move into a new space during a global pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is a lot that you're providing. This is all for free. This is my free community. That's I have a lot of, lot. 
It's a lot. a lot. That's a lot. That's is good though. So what are your premium services? I have a lot of different programs for different things, but my main program is called Marketing with Intention. And Marketing with Intention is for coaches and healers who are trying to get consistent income. They want steady stream of, of clients coming through the door. They want to fill their one-on-one -on -one programs. They want to fill their group programs, and they just don't know why it's not working. And a lot of times these coaches and healers come to me and they already have so much in place. They have a Facebook group, they have a blog, <laughs> they have every platform, they maybe have a webinar, whatever, and they still yeah. don't have consistent clients. <laughs> so in my oh program, my I give you all of the systems that I use in my business and mm -hmm. I just give it to you and teach you how to use them. And it's a 12 week program. Wow. So you don't make them have to set it up and everything because that's the thing. It's like I, yeah. I've been in some of the different groups and classes where it's like, OK, this is what we do now. Subscribe to these things. You know, they give you a lit list of and then it's like, OK, now I got to sit here and figure out how to build this out. No, we're not doing that. I am giving you literally everything I use in my business. And then I teach you how to implement it into yours. It's a lot of work. It's not easy. Um, it's an intense program. It's a business accelerator. So at the end of the 90 days, you're going to be scaling your business. It's really fast. Wow. Now, there's something else that you wanted to show me. I would love to check that out. Let's see. Sure. This is a free gift that I have for your audience. You can get it at AbundantStrategy.com slash freebie, F-R-E-E-B-I-E. -E. But this is called uh, The Five Reasons Why Your Content Isn't Converting, because I love creating content. And part of being visible online is having awesome content. So this is where you can go to get it. Um, and this is going to help you convert your have your content convert into clients. A lot of times people know they need to post content, so they just post randomly or they freak out the day before, ah, I gotta post something, I don't know, or five minutes before. Mm -hmm. But there is a strategy with your content. Your content should be what pulls people in and turns them into customers or clients. So this is what I'm explaining here and it's all without Facebook ads. It's all organic. Oh, wow, I love yeah. that. You so know you can go here and download that for free. Okay, let me just put that up real quick. Okay, so for my for those who are checking us out. Yep, it's abundantstrategy.com slash freebie. All right, you all be sure to check that out. And of course, she's also, her information is scrolling across the bottom. Now, melissamarketing.com, give me some information about that. That is my agency. Um, right now we have a client roster list of over 50 clients. We have 16 people on my team. And Melissa Marketing is where you can learn about all the programs or listen to my podcast and just learn from me. I like to give a lot away for free. So I'm always providing more and more valuable content for everybody. And it's all listed there. Um, and then we're going to be redoing my website in just a little bit. I'm waiting for another photo shoot, which got postponed because of COVID and it's happening soon. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Now, now, Melissa, you, you said something that, you know, just because I'm new to this space, you are, you, you're, once again, you're from that more empath, spiritual, and you're like, you give a lot of things free. You give a lot of information free, but there's other people, there's that contrast, like, don't give nothing away free. So as a newbie, I mean, what's the psychology that you're going by? The, the reason why everybody else is like, put a dollar on every thought that you think. So the thing is that I'm not going to ask someone to spend $25,000 with me if I have no idea who they are, because they're not going to look at, if someone were to knock on your door and be like, hey, want to spend $10,000 with me? You'd be like, get out of here. Who are you? And close the door, you know? <laughs> that is so, true. Yeah. So yeah. giving stuff away for free, number one, shows your expertise. It positions okay. you as a leader in your space. It sets you apart in your industry. And it provides a lot of value. So it builds a lot of trust. So people can get a quick win. They can listen to my podcast and have a million aha moments, or they can download this freebie and go, oh my gosh, I never knew that. I'm going to try it out. So it's things that they can just implement right away and make a change. And then they realize my stuff really is good. 
And then they might go, oh, I want to try something else for free or I want to try something else for free or maybe this time I'll try something for $10. And they just keep like dipping their toe in the water until they're like, you know what? I like her. I like her style. All her stuff helps me. I'm going to sign up for her big thing. So giving stuff away for free is the first impression that somebody has of you. And it's also a, a non non-pressured way of people to get to work with you. They get to experience the way that you you teach or the way that you show up. And, and that is how you build a relationship. People buy from people who they've built a relationship with. So that's the strategy. And the other thing is, if I give stuff away for free and it, it just blows your mind, you're going to go, oh my gosh, I got all of that for free. I can't believe it. And I can't even imagine what her paid stuff is going to be like. So I very, very much recommend giving away a lot of great high value stuff for free. You know, that is a paradigm shift. So this whole having to talk to you in May when I'm making some concrete decisions was divine. Perfect. <laughs> and you know, this interview that you post and share is your way of giving something away for free because it's valuable. I never think of it that way. You're yeah. Paradigm. Paradise here. Okay, I'm feeling like Oprah right now. Aha! 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 Oh my God. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. You know, anything else you would want to share before we wrap things up? Well, I really appreciate you asking me to be on the show. I'm honored to be here um, and also sharing me with your audience. If anybody is an entrepreneur, service based online, especially a coach or a healer, and you just feel like you're stuck or you're confused or you've downloaded every freebie and you've purchased every <laughs> online course and you still don't have consistent income, yes. something needs to shift and you yes. probably can't do it alone. And it could be just some small little tweak that can make a massive change. So just to bet on yourself, to understand yes. that you have a dream and you have a vision and it is valuable and what you desire can totally be yours despite what anybody else and all the naysayers might say. As an entrepreneur, we are the innovators. We are the creators. We are the ones that take the chance, we take the risk, we put ourselves out there to make a change in the world. And if that's why you started, then just never give up and keep learning and keep growing and keep doing your thing. Lise, you are godsend. <laughs> Such a divine. And I'm so grateful that you were able to find space in your very busy schedule to share what you, who you are with us today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. <laughs> this has been a very special, special edition of the Christy Taylor Show. Uh, look for more special editions in addition to our traditional show. Be sure to go to our Instagram account, the Christy Taylor Show also Facebook, and you can catch the replay of this on YouTube. Just check out Christy Taylor online. Thanks again, Melise. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye -bye. Um, blessings, everyone. Blessings.